Christy's big brother. Um, only a few of you here that know Chris. Uh, Karen asked me if I could come and speak, and it's truly an honor to have this dedicated after Chris. And I was like, okay, so yeah, I'd love to do it. Because anytime you have a chance to talk about the glory of God, you got to do it. And so um, but I wasn't sure what to talk about. Because there's, you know, three or four sermonettes that I can take from Christie's life. The importance of forgiveness. So let's we'll get to that. Let's go back to who, who is Christy? She was my little sister. She, we grew up here in Oregon City, um, not in a Christian home, but we were believers. Um, but believing doesn't get you to heaven, because Satan believes too. It's what you do with that belief and the relationship that comes from that. Um, Christy was first introduced to Jesus through this church, through the bus that goes through the neighborhoods. Does that bus still go, I hope? No. Maybe someday. Because <laughs> it, it's, it made an impact. Um, it would come and pick up Chris and Mike, my little brother and sister. Um, now what, you know, what in Sunday school was taught, I mean, I know you teach from the Bible here. Um, but then, and so she was introduced, but she didn't, she walked away, I don't know what, what commitment she had made at that point. But in junior high and beginning of high school, she, she was not following Christ. Um, sad to say she was more following her big brother and big sisters and, and uh, doing things we shouldn't have been doing. Um, and then in 82, so Karen, what was she, a sophomore or junior? She was junior. Um, she came to Christ, I'm assuming in that spring, and I don't know, I'll never know who brought her to Christ or what really made her turn her life around, but she was on fire. Her life <coughs> changed. She, she was Christ to many people. She, um, I mean, everything changed. Her grades went from barely getting by to being a good student. Um, she was just a joy to be around. Unless you just really didn't, weren't ready to hear the truth. Because I, for me, I knew the truth, but I had read enough of the Bible to know that I could do that at any time. I could ask forgiveness and come to Christ at any time. So I'm thinking, I'm having fun now. I'll wait till when I get old, when I'm 40. Remember when 40 used to be old? <laughs> it's not old anymore. <laughs> um, and then Christy, I mean, many of you don't know, but Christy was killed one night um, after following Christ and living for Christ for just a, only about eight months. Um, she was killed by a drunk driver. And all of a sudden it was like, wow. Not only do I maybe not live to be 40 and be able to turn my life over to Christ, I could have been that drunk driver the night before. And so, it, it, it just made a huge impact. I was actually here at this church the next day. It happened on Saturday night, and I was here Sunday morning. Um, and it was just huge. And I just, the importance of her life, I mean, she, she shared Christ for such a short time, but she shared it fully. And it, it's not even, it's not the, her life that had the greatest impact, but it's her death, which is hard to say, um, but it's so true. It's how many people she touched that she'll never know about. There's kids at the high school that she shared Christ with. Karen was one of them. So how many people has Karen been, been able to share Christ with? You know, her big brother and her little brother um, came to Christ through her death. Her parents came to Christ. And I look at the legacy. Uh, my kids grew up in a Christian home, and the people that they have brought to Christ, and it just goes, it just goes on and on. Um, then you know, I mentioned forgiveness. We could have held a bitterness towards that man that killed her, my sister, killed our parents. But who does that hurt but us? We cannot have that relationship unless we forgive them. And then just the important to. The key word is relationship. You have to have a relationship with Christ to really, well, to get to heaven. It's a 
about it's about what you do with the knowledge. Um, it's just exponential. So I, I, I mean, I think again, it's an honor to be here, but I just think, what are you going to do with this? I mean, you come together as college kids, and it's you know a feel good time, and it's a feel good place, and you come and get you know questions answered, and you know, be more around different topics. But if they if they don't go, if they don't leave this building with you, what's the point? I mean, who who can you share Christ's love with? Um, if you don't if you don't know non-believers, get in different circles. Find some. They're there. <laughs> um, I just yeah, again, it's just such an honor to be here and an honor for this. Um, that I can share with my wife, as big as an honor as this is to be de dedicated to my sister, it just as easily could have been dedicated to that bus driver. Because mm -hmm. that's where it started with Chris. <coughs> so, um, thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, I just pray, well, my wife and I will continue to pray for this mission. Because, uh, I mean, this is a college town. You have to have a huge, huge field. And you don't have to, you don't have to leave the country. Canada Mission 